Uh, see me, I'm not very clear what uh, you guys can see. <laughs> yep, we can see you and you're very clear. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, good. So let me start sharing my screen as well. Uh, okay, I think. Uh, I don't know if I maximize this. So. Can you see this and presentation mode? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. It's in the presentation mode. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, I'm here to talk about, uh, you know, edge computing hardware. Uh, what is edge computing hardware and why it's important? Um, so to start with, uh, you know, as Supermicro, we do all kinds of, we sell all kinds of servers and, uh, you know, including the edge devices as well. And uh, when we talk about edge, I'm sure everyone is aware what is edge, but I'm just going to repeat it again. So normally we have all these sensors connected uh, you know, to a device uh, near to it, and then it sends all the information uh, either to the on-prem server or uh, or to the cloud infrastructure back there, and then the decision is taken, or you know, data is stored, analysis is done there, and then it's received back. But that adds a certain amount of delay. So the edge device itself uh, needs to be more intelligent to take the decision and uh, do that so it, it it needs its own capability now yeah earlier it was fine but now uh, you know people are doing video analytics uh, you know they are doing a lot of other things on the edge itself uh, and these are some of the applications where these kind of iot or edge devices are used uh, it could be in financial it could be in critical manufacturing uh, you know in emergency services in healthcare defense, industrial. So these are various uh, different applications, including 5G, uh, you know, which is coming up. Uh, we need more edge devices on the 5G there. Uh, so that's that's more on the uh, on the edge side of why an edge device is required with intelligence, with some amount of compute, storage, and network required there. Uh, so that uh, it can perform to the to the application and give a better uh, improvement on that. So rather than dependent morally on the cloud, not only that, it's also in such a way that if, if there is an issue connecting to the cloud and you don't have to wait for the decision to happen, so it can do that and then later sync up with the cloud. So it can pass on the data at the later point in time if there is a uh, you know connection missed or there is a disconnect uh, to the cloud. So that's, that's basically the advantage of the edge. So as an example, uh, so here I've shown a retail store and uh, different edge devices, like we have this mobile, you know, a point of sale system for auto checkout, inventory, Wi-Fi enabled cameras. Again, I have mentioned them, this scale of uh, how, uh, you know, high they are required of. Uh, so like self labeling and even you know, GPS tracking on the vehicle, uh, location-based advertisements, interactive cloud-based digital signage. So there are various, various edge devices within this retail store here. Uh, so how do we manage all this or how do we control them, how, how to run these applications? So that is what I think Siddharth will be talking more on that. But this is, this is a challenge, of course, managing all of them, so many of them, like this is one store, if I have a multiple store or a chain of stores, you know, there are big stores which are doing this. So how do you manage it? How do you secure them? How do you keep them future-proof? And uh, of course, uh, everyone, everything runs its own stack, its own application. So what kind of hardware are things required? And space is also a constraint. You can't put big, big servers or, you know, big machines here and, you know, take a lot of power and, you know, uh, you, you can't do that. You can't start creating data centers on all these places. That's not possible. So that is where your edge will help you to run these applications efficiently and uh, give you a better performance. So looking at Supermicro, uh, you know, embedded systems, of course, we have a wide uh, portfolio of uh, server storage systems and other things. So I'm only concentrating on the embedded systems or the edge systems that we have uh, in Supermicro. So we have uh, segregated or divided that into four categories. The fanless system, uh, which is more uh, robust, low power, wide range of working in temperature. And you can have a DC voltage connected to it uh, from 
you know 12 to 36 volts to power these boxes uh, you don't need to have an ac power or things like that then we have a compact box again uh, they have a small fan built in so reliable and easy to deploy very small uh, size of a set of box uh, what you watch on tv like a tata sky or a airtel set of box that's the size of these boxes then we have some mini towers uh, which can support you know a uh, bit of storage hot swappable storage drives you can have four drives you can remove them so uh, more powerful again and then you know on on the power side and also more storage more compute and then we have one new rack again uh, they come with a lot of expansion slots and they come with front or rear io more uh, ethernet ports more storage so things like that so again in terms of processing power we have uh, from atom to uh, skylake xeon so we have uh, kaby lake uh, you know atom and then xeon d so starting from uh, 9.5 watts to 80 watts the wide range of uh, processing wide uh, number of cores starting from 2 core to 16 cores you know that's the range of cores you can get in this so depending on your application type how much processing power you need you can select the relevant uh, processor and also storage or network so based on that uh, you can select these boxes so let's deep dive into each one of them so in terms of fanless boxes uh, we have uh, you know uh, these products uh, these are based on core i7 um, system uh, processors intel uh, eighth generation ninth generation seventh generation so these are all seven generation system that i've shown here and these are based on the uh, latest atom based processors again these are all wide range temperatures they are all fanless uh, so primarily used for you know edge computing easy integration energy uh, efficiency with graphic capability so they do come with uh, uh, hdmi ports or display ports so things like that which you can use for various uh, different applications like digital signage and things like that we also can it can also can be used for manufacturing or factory or automation with din rail mounting options as well on these so as an example i have taken here one of the systems so here uh, the the options that you can get in this same system with various part numbers like you want a small gateway fully featured comes with audio and you know hdmi lan ports it, it comes with two hdmi ports now you want to you know better cost optimized i don't need all that i just need one hdmi and two lan ports so we can we can we have that we can give you that now i want a wi-fi enabled thing yeah we have a wi-fi module also built into it and with uh, with an antenna that you can use here and otherwise i want more lan ports so we can give you more lan ports so all these systems fanless systems they are rugged uh, they work at wide temperatures and you have various options um, so that way you can select the right one based on your application so in terms of applications so you can use them in uh, you know uh, self service parcel lockers things or you know uh, or a flight information system or a digital signage or factory automation machine automation for gaming ticketing machines traffic control that's that's one of the uh, use cases which is very good uh, kind of you can do video analytics you can see the amount of traffic and automatically lights can be switched on or off because you have these powerful processors as i told you to run that so you can do artificial intelligence on them take decisions on the spot and you know uh, easily use them so that's that's the kind of uh, you know uh, use cases that you can use for these boxes so coming to the compact box, it is almost similar. The only difference is this has a, a fan. Of course, they are not built for wide temperature ranges because there is a fan, there's an opening here for the air intake and things like that. So built in for indoors. So the fanless systems are primarily can also be used for outdoors. Uh, and it's it doesn't make any noise. Of course, because of the fan, this does make very small amount of noise. So and these are primarily used for indoors. Again, they come up with various processor ranges and uh, uh, similar uh, functionalities. Again, these can be customized for various options. Uh, you can have your OEM logo also here. If, you, if you're going to deploy it, you can have various options here. Uh, you can have ser more serial ports. So anything, any of that sort, we can, uh, we can help you in achieving that based, based on your requirement and needs. 
uh, you want gpio ports you want uh, other uh, you know digital io ports or analog ports we can incorporate all that and provide you to the external thing for your connecting your sensors uh, any other thing so we can easily do that uh, with these boxes so here it's more on physical and environmental security management in a in a rack uh, you can see here if we have mounted it on a you know 19 inch rack mount here and uh, we are controlling it, it it's, it's using an apollo lake uh, process here to monitor the environmental and security uh, things in a, in a data center or in any place where you want to maintain that so see if the temperatures are going up within the data center send an alarm you know, intimate the person, uh, you know, basically for IT infrastructure management kind of a thing. Another uh, use case example is for digital signage. Uh, we have all seen this in the airports, uh, shows various temperatures or advertisements or the flight information. So this box can be, you know, mounted uh, behind uh, the display here like this. You typically need a HDMI port and a 4K display. So here, the box that we have used here is a core i3-7100U. It's a two-core, 15-watt uh, processor. So that's that's the kind of typical application on the uh, on these boxes, of these boxes. Yeah. So going with the uh, one new rack uh, systems, of course, these are uh, quite more powerful and also comes with uh, up to 16 cores and the various options. You can, uh, as I told you, it gives you a lot lot more uh, uh, things like eight uh, ports of uh, ethernet or gpus uh, you know or storage so these are modular so as an example we have shown here where i can we have our own advanced io module which we have designed so i can insert uh, 8 10g or 25g or even 100g uh, 100g uh, you know modules here and uh, storage again i can use uh, you know, M.2 is here to increase my storage capacity or the GPUs here for in improving my processing capability. So I can mix and match these modules within these boxes and provide the equal, I mean, required hardware the, to meet the requirement of the application. I can give you any hardware you want here. So these are typically the, you know, Tesla T4 or the P4 GPU. Uh, and uh, storages, we have up to like, you know, two tera, four terabytes now within M.2. So you can uh, add more for recording video, you know, or analyzing it or anything like that. So on the edge, you can do uh, AI inferencing kind of applications. So again, uh, we can have more network, as I mentioned earlier, on these systems also. Standard network cards also. Uh, also, we can use a QRT uh, technology-based network cards, which is primarily used for you know time stamping and other things, primarily used in 5G applications. Uh, I can have FPGAs again, again, used in 5G applications or any customized uh, you know uh, kind of things. On the edge, of course, GPU for any processing or video analytics or whatever you want to run on that basically ai and machine learning kind of applications and also storage we can have up to four nvme m.2 ssds from this so i can have these standard cards within these boxes and provide you the optimized edge computing system so i have a small video to show one of the applications developed by one of our customers uh, using these boxes with a tesla p4 Yeah, so as you saw, it's a uh, smart retail, uh, you know, on the edge, how the video analyzed uh, what's the food and provided the bill for it. So that's that's a typical kind of application and 
these boxes will help you implement these kind of uh, solutions so again you know it could be kitchen management or even the traffic recognizing the vehicle or the or the number plate and what's happening you know based on that take decisions or record information departmental store surveillance even for food so smart checkout and things like that. so this is another highly powerful box again uh, with a lot of cores and this is the one you rack uh, so various we can even have this graphics within this compact box as well with a lot of uh, networking cores so it it, it it depends on what kind of hardware requirement you have and we can match all these requirements not only intel we do also have a lot of amd based uh, systems we have the amd epic emirate 3000 based processor on all these systems so if if you're looking at uh, you know uh, embedded uh, or amd solutions we do also have that it's not only only intel we also have amd based solutions so we cater to that requirement as well so this is an outdoor edge uh, computing box uh, you know which is mounted on the pole uh, it, it comes with uh, lockable buckles and completely sealed box with its own uh, cooling and everything so this is how the box would look uh, completed the complete mechanicals, everything is from Supermicro. So it weighs around 60, 46 kgs. It can operate between minus 40 and plus 50, uh, depending on the configuration, of course, based on the processor. It comes with a 100 watt uh, 16 core processor with 512 GB of RAM, uh, with 2.5 inch SATA, and with three expansion slots. So you can either put a FPGA or a GPU. So this is what is we have deployed a lot of places for our. Uh, you know, 5G applications. So again, this is IP65 compliant. That means it is both dust and, uh, you know, uh, water resistant. So it, it can be for an external usage. That, that is what it, it complies for. Um, so the typical applications would be for 5G RAN, uh, you know, central unit and distributed units. Uh, this has been primarily used for that. So they have put the Intel FPGA network acceleration card and primarily used for that uh, with the Altio Star being our partner for uh, the software side. And the edge inferencing, I was just mentioning with NVIDIA GPU cards, you can run a lot of uh, you know, edge applications or AI applications on the edge, uh, on the pole itself, like traffic monitoring I was mentioning earlier or any surveillance or anything that you can do with a, a video analysis and things. Again, we can also use it for video streaming solutions uh, using uh, our servers in the back end for the cloud and uh, in the edge. So I, I think during the lockdown, everyone were uh, uh, you know, very hooked into Netflix and Amazon. So how do we get that content? How do you store that information locally and try to cache it and you know, reduce the buffering? So you install these devices on the edge, give the, give the end user uh, a better experience by you know having that communication to the edge rather than you know every time it has to go back to a, a cloud server or have that lag or you know delay so that way that's that's the kind of typical applications as well these boxes can be used so overall uh, you know this is the whole portfolio of our system so as i've mentioned earlier we have fanless compact you know boxes even the mini towers and the one u rack we cater to all various uh, you know, hardware requirements based on your application and uh, how to manage them, how to uh, deploy your applications easily. Siddharth is going to cover in the next uh, few minutes now on this. So you know, that's, that's more on this. So we also have a small demo in the end. So this is the hardware uh, board that I have uh, connected and uh, Siddharth has installed a few applications and he will be able to show you how to manage these devices and how easy it is to do them. And I'm uh, primarily running uh, uh, Ubuntu 20.04 on this box. This is the specifications of the box. It is running a Xeon uh, D2141i 8 core processor with 8 GB RAM and 1 TB of uh, hard disk. It has dual LAN ports. So I've connected it to the internet as well. And uh, I have installed a couple of virtual machines also on that box. So Siddharth is going to demonstrate that on, on the management part of this. So that uh, comes to my end of my presentation. So we'll have, uh, we'll answer your questions in the end. So over to you Siddharth. Hey, thanks, thanks Girish, it was fantastic. I hope people could, at least the audience could know which hardware to be used for their application applications going forward. 
Great. Uh, let me start with my presentation now. Uh, thank you again. Thank you. I hope team can see my screen. Yes, it does. Awesome. Yeah, yes. now it's a presentation. Awesome, awesome, cool. Thank you. Though Girish mentioned that uh, the, the specs of the hardware where we installed Icon was quite heavy, but uh, we can start with as simple as Raspberry Pi Zero and also, anyway, we'll take up uh, uh, that portion later. And, uh, I just wanted to talk about the different management solutions which can be used by different type of hardware which you have choose. Uh, uh, definitely a variety has been available by Supermicro. So how we can manage these hardware in scale as well through Icon Dashboard is what I want to take you through. So, okay, why do we require a management solution? So that's the first question which we... completely multi-vendor setup. So we would have vendors, hard, your, your, essentially the gateway vendor would be different, your network vendor would be different, your sensor vendor would be different. So that's a completely multi-vendor system. You don't even... Okay, I'll just stop my video, I think. The... Yeah. Sorry. So I was talking about it's a multi-vendor setup altogether, right? Now there's no IT staff predominantly to monitor these devices. Now, if you and this is a live agricultural field, right? If you talk about data centers, there's always an IT staff which is there to monitor the devices, to monitor the network applications and everything running on these data center devices. But when you when we talk about these IoT edge deployments altogether, it's been either on a customer setup or on the field, on the road. There's no one to monitor these devices altogether. And you have you you have to have a solution to monitor them. And the, the other part, and definitely there are various other reasons. I'm just talking about the major meter, which we see from our customers. Why do they need a monitoring solution? It's remotely deployed. People see network issues a lot, a lot of network issues, a lot of upgrade issues, which they see. They, there's definitely a dearth of, uh, they're not able to reliably upgrade the solutions, upgrade the applications from that. These are some of the very basic things which require a management solution for which you will require a good management solution. Now, uh, talking about scale in management as well, right? When you are just managing a couple of devices, maybe five or ten for POC purpose, it's quite easy, right? It's it's you can you can go one on one and then upgrade the configurations or do a, a upgrade or deploy application. But with, but when you talk about hundreds and thousands of these devices deployed on field. Right, manageability becomes a problem, a serious problem at scale. Right, you can't afford to have um, five people managing uh, hundreds and hundreds of devices because as you scale up your management requirement of the team, uh, OPEX will go. Definitely. Now, let's start. Management solutions for what is it all about? Get about smart and smart applications where you deploy these uh, fanless or lower power system. You talk about industrial reality because majorly the purpose for that is data gathering and uh, searching. You talk about environmental monitoring or connected devices or vehicles. Uh, power and fanless systems. You don't usually go with the higher processing units. Now, what are the challenges when you, you deploy such sort of systems? So the challenges are predominantly how do you remotely debug these problems or these these uh, uh, deployments which are done? How do you reliably do a firmware upgrade? Because anyway, even there's the the, the applications which are running on are not so much critical, but you have to do some sort of configuration upgrades or firmware upgrades based on the customer or your own changes which is there. How do you monitor the uptime? It is very very essential to monitor the uptime of these devices. Talking about industrial IoT itself, right? Uh, when was your device up? When was it down? The compute device up. When was it down? Why exactly was it down? It becomes a big challenge. 
and then you need to do fleet management of these devices so uh, hundreds and thousands in a single factory itself or maybe multiple of couple of factories or you talk about uh, connected vehicles right uh, a very big fleet has to be managed uh, of devices and then these are some of the life challenges is what we see about these systems not talking about existing systems. Normally, some sort of uh, 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 slightly higher, or in fact, uh, higher than the current cons due to the inferencing of AGI models itself, where you uh, get find out what's going on. So, some of the examples for these are video analytic systems. You talk about machine vision systems. We talk about digital OH or programmatic OH, right? All of them get feed from a camera and then try to do some sort of analysis. This is some sort of, uh, so if you just, just taking examples of digital OS itself, right? So if you, you talk about a, a very basic digital OS system, these are some of the peripherals of the system. So if you talk about these systems, right? What is a typical system look like? We're talking about digital OS itself, right? These are some of the components of the system. Now you could think about managing not only these devices, but also each and every of these components, starting with the camera, touch screen, maybe a printer who's giving the receipt card readers or connectivity device module or processors, all of you, you require management solution for all of them. And these all would be a multi-vendor system. So how do you manage it from a single place is what the question is. Talking about the video analytics thing, right? You, you talk about a camera installed on a, a, a pole, which is doing a number plate detection. These are some of the challenges which you which we have seen all, all together how do i remotely access the the compute device which is on the pole how the network is quite unstable how do i make sure that i'm tapping on the network or i essentially get the status of my network how do i reliably upgrade the models which are running on these uh, devices computing aji inferences devices itself now these are the challenges right how to remotely remote debugging of these things how do you do a model update a very very common challenge is a model update of these edge inference devices how do i monitor the peripherals as we spoke about right all the cameras the touch screens are on the peripherals of a compute device how do i monitor these peripherals as well how do i get the live feed from the camera application monitoring is also very very essential in these all cases not talking about the powerful one RU systems, or this could be two RU as well, or multiple RU as well, where these the use cases comes into picture. Now, here we talk about AR and VR systems altogether. So, uh, where you use in so the, the picture which is there, right? It's showing up a, a factory or a manufacturing unit where the, where the person is trying to do or diagnose the machine itself. So, there are high end AR and VR systems which require sort of heavy compute on the edge itself. Or you talk about self-checkout stores itself, which is again another example where everything, the, the, the complete data sets or the, the feed goes to these high-end systems setting in the uh, maybe a small data centers uh, type of thing on prem itself. Again, the challenges would definitely not vary much in these cases as well. It's again device management. Remote debugging, again, the same thing. Model upgrades, application monitoring, and connected device management. So uh, what are the connected devices to these one RU systems? You have to do a management for these systems as well. And that's what these challenges are. Now, talking about how ICANN helps in all of them, right? We spoke about challenges. We spoke about the devices which are in place. Now, what are how is ICANN solving this? So it's by term, what we do at ICANN, it's a complete software solution to monitor, manage, securely access, and upgrade area of remotely IoT edge devices and applications. And we work across the horizon. We heard from Girish as well, right? Uh, the, the, the number of, or the, the type of devices which uh, super micro sells or manufactures. So we, we also work across these edge devices, that servers, robotic arms, uh, connected vehicles, smart retail, vending machines, surveillance, computer vision, image processing, drones. All of them require a compute to be secure itself on the device itself right talking about these all these applications or use cases, right what is unique across all these use cases is the hardware and the application so you could run it in different different hardware so you so if it's uh, as we spoke about right uh, uh, Industrial IoT application would require uh, maybe a low power system or a smart energy requirement would be again a low power uh, system hardware 
and then the application onto it. So for uh, industrial IoT, it would be maybe simple data massaging or getting the data, sending it to some other cloud system. But uh, talking about uh, surveillance system, right? It's running out these models would be the application and the hardware also we discussed. So what is unique is the hardware and the application, but what is common across all these use cases or all these devices as well is that once deployed on field, you have to take care of privacy and security. You have to make sure of remote connectivity. You are doing a device monitoring, application monitoring, network monitoring, and then at the end, upgrades and deployments has to happen. Uh, that's what we take care of it. The common part is what Icon takes care of it and then helps the customers with. Now, how does it help, right? Uh, a DevOps person, so how essentially in the whole organization, a, it helps a DevOps person, and how does it help? Them? So, for a DevOps person, right? What is his day-to-day -day job? He need to deploy more and more devices on field. Right? He has to monitor the ones which are already deployed. He has to operate on them, restart them, stop them, and some more applications. Then diagnose and debug what are the problems or challenges which you are getting. And then at the end, report issues. So once these devices, once these compute devices are all on field, this is what his job demands of. Now, how does Icon help him? Helping with each and every components of his problem or job with a single dashboard. Uh, we provide over the crates helps them with monitoring of the devices, applications, container deployment, secure remote access reports and analysis. We help him uh, doing this thing, this guy, DevOps guy. And how does it help, right? So if you look out at this topology diagram, right, you, you could relate to it. It's, it's very familiar where you have IoT devices connected to edge infrastructure gateways. Now these gateways could be as we discussed, right, or as Girish mentioned, could vary from very low power fanless devices to one RU, two RU systems altogether, right? Uh, and then you have uh, where, where it's a big, big unit, you would have a separate storage and edge server also in place. How does Icon help is we have these software agents, very low footprint or very small footprint software agents, which can be deployed on each and every device device running either Linux or Android and once these uh, once these uh, agents are deployed and that's where the cloud controller helps them to control each and every aspect of the whole ecosystem altogether. I will very quickly show you one of the dashboard. Meanwhile or maybe later you can also try experiencing it yourself by just logging to experience.icon.io. Um, so we are at the place where we have installed it on the Grish setup as well as the demo site which we are showing you. Uh, the devices are real, uh, so it's a demo setup. You could see right there are connected, there are total four devices which have the agents installed as we spoke about it. Two are up, two are down. You could geolocate them. I'm talking about mostly from the management perspective, like right? how you can manage. As I mentioned, like you have a holistic view of what's going on. So if you know right out of four of your devices, two are working, two are not since connected to or not connected you can profile your devices the way you want to be the applications which are running these could be various applications which we discussed right going inside one of the device right uh, you can have the complete device details the devices which are up you can remotely connect with them with a single click no vpn it can be behind the net or a firewall right going inside the device it's uh, you could check out all the interface we can execute commands now you want to execute or do a configuration update on these devices you can simply execute any commands or scripts with a single click you have to just configure the commands which you want to execute that's it you will have a complete list of execution uh, the, the output of the uh, command which got executed likewise you can do any sort of execution of commands or you can open device ports so these this device is an nginx uh, can open ports to find out what's going on. These ports are locally available, but now, right now, we are trying to open it from the cloud as well, completely secure. So, yeah, some of the files which is three part from the Nginx server. We can check out the uptime of the device. So, you could see a complete map of what's the uptime of this device. Today is 3rd of 
March, you could say. So the device was down between 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, you can click on this portal to find out what exactly happened. So yes, there were quite system was under voltage that made the device down. And that's the reason there were system errors as well. So you can check out the details and then find out what was the issue. And, you know. So a, a level of diagnostics has been done by our system itself, the controller itself to tell you what exactly went wrong and why the device which has to be up is not up for you. So we are solving a good amount of management solution for you. Otherwise, right, if say you are deploying hundreds and thousands of devices, if you have to go and find out the reason why each and every of your device which is down is down, it'll take a good amount of DevOps effort or engineering effort from your side to do it. Now the system does it for you. You can have a complete visualization of how the normal CPU, the, essentially the basic parameters of the system is behaving. And on top of it, can execute or can have your own telemetry as well, right? Uh, since we lost about, yeah, talking about logs, you can get complete system logs uh, and you can configure whatever logs you wish to have in, in these setup, complete setup. The application monitoring is again very essential and very unique part which we are talking about, right? We spoke about multiple applications, right? Uh, edge analytics application, intrinsic applications, or uh, talking about machine vision, industrial IoT applications, right? The basic crux part of all these use until unless your applications are not performing well, the whole system goes for a toss. And that's where ITIN comes into picture and tells you that, okay, this is what your applications are doing and this is how they are performing. The complete performance of your applications monitoring, the log, you can essentially control your application application which is running. I'm also monitoring the processes and you can monitor whatever you want. And get all the details of each of your application process. So how these this the, the applications are consuming resources, right? Uh, that's predominantly it. You can discover neighbors, find out neighbors, discover them, control them as well. I won't go here. Uh, and then at the end, you can check out the deployments. Do a complete over there upgrade, and then see how the upgrade went. So you have to just give us a compose essentially the package file of the upgrade, if it could be an upgrade of a script, it could be an upgrade of a, uh, what do you say, uh, a, a complete uh, Linux package or an APK file if it's an Android device or any so any 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 upgrade which you can think of, configuration upgrades. You, you have to just prepare a package file and then do a deployment. Uh, like as you could see, right, we have done a deployment. Uh, it was done for two devices, one got uh, successful, it took 20, 42 seconds. One has skipped, maybe it's already installed on that device. That's the reason it's all that it's skipped. So you will have a complete detail of what exactly happened. So we did it on two, one success, one skip, the log of what got success is also that. So you have a picture of how your deployments or upgrades are also behaving here. Uh, that's more or less, uh, I would say, right? Uh, uh, from the demo perspective, you can create reports as well. So this way you can manage your complete device devices and application from a single console without going anywhere else is is what we have to offer it i think maybe i'll uh, stop here and then uh, again over to chetan hey uh, thank you siddharth uh, thanks for the wonderful presentation uh, and also thanks uh, mr girish uh, for a wonderful presentation which we had uh, this evening uh, i sincerely thank both of you uh, and, and also, I apologize uh, with uh, <clears throat> to the entire uh, members who have been uh, listening to the uh, talk here for the short disruption we had in between for some technical reasons. Uh, so then, uh, next thing would be like, I mean, uh, if uh, the audience have any questions, uh, we can talk about it. Uh, I'm just seeing if there are any like, uh, no, there are no any specific questions on the chat channel, then may maybe we could actually uh, talk about the questions which came during the uh, registration. Uh, I'm just pulling it out, just a moment, here it goes. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so probably uh, uh, Mr. Siddharth, can you actually uh, look at all the questions that came up uh, during the registration and then so between you and uh, Girish, uh, if you could help answer that, I think that would be good. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so uh, maybe this one is for Girish, right? Uh, Girish, uh, looking for recommendation on SAP hardware section selection, especially for HANA in memory. Uh, okay, so and I think this is more uh, not related to Edge, but of course, uh, we have a certified hardware for SAP HANA. Uh, it's a four processor uh, system. Uh, so you can uh, visit supermicro.com and uh, look into the multi uh, you know, uh, processor option there, and you would get the the latest uh, Cooper Lake uh, system, uh, which is also SAP certified. So you can check it out there, and uh, you can always uh, reach back to me. Okay, uh, and uh, there's one more uh, again for you. So here it is: uh, IoT inbuilt telematics hardware. Do you have some sort of telematics hardware and software also for connected electric scooters? Um, when you say telemetrics, what kind of thing is that in terms of protocol? Uh, yeah, uh, Sugirish, if I can answer, uh, in, in terms of uh, telemetrics, so basically, uh, are there any hardware that can directly read various sensor parameters, uh, probably in the hardware and push it to uh, the appropriate location via maybe MQDT protocol or COAP protocol? So one of those kind of things actually could be there. Like uh, the question really is, are there any specific hardware which can collect the telemetry data and push it in the in the hardware? Yeah, I mean, in any of those fanless boxes, as I mentioned, we can have uh, digital I/O and other analog I/Os or anything like that, which can get the data. And it, we can have uh, we do have a SIM slot as well available in some of these boxes, so I can push them over uh, the internet or you know maybe through. Wi-Fi or even Bluetooth, whatever option you want. So yeah, that is possible. On any of those standard fanless boxes, I would recommend that. Uh, since you're talking about on the vehicle, I would uh, recommend a fanless box. So, uh, this, it so it's more good. like uh, you're suggesting that these devices will have a uh, right way to collect the telemetry, if you have right kind of IO ports to collect the telemetry. Yes. And then uh, we have to incorporate uh, right kind of uh, protocols to push that onto the place wherever we require. Is that Correct. Easy? Yes, exactly. Yes. We can we can um, you know, help you in any any such thing. Like if you're using Bluetooth, yeah, we can provide you that. You want to do it over internet. You want to have a 4G SIM or a 5G kind of an application connected. We can do that. So yes, that's possible. Correct. Thank you. Okay. So another question, maybe one more we have taken. Uh, how to move from prototype to production grade hardware? Um, so again, it's, since it's related, maybe. Yeah, so there's like prototype, uh, normally you, it depends on the application. So for us, uh, you know, uh, whatever you're using uh, as an embedded, uh, you know, uh, we also are a building block company. So for your prototype, you don't need a fanless box. You just want to have a motherboard and test it in your lab. We can supply only the motherboard to you. And tomorrow you are happy with the motherboard and you say, okay, now I want to deploy it on the field and you want a fanless box from that motherboard, we do have it. So the same motherboard which is used inside uh, can be used in your lab. Once you have your proof of concept done, then you can uh, deploy it. So for us, uh, we don't differentiate saying, okay, this is the hardware only you can use in the lab and this is what you should deploy. So in terms of deployment, uh, whatever you have used in the lab, same thing can be used for deployment as well. So uh, we don't differentiate that way. So, but in terms of costing, definitely you don't need a fanless box. You you don't want all that mechanicals and rugged things. You just want to power it in the lab. So you know, keeping it on the table. I just need a motherboard. Fair enough. We can only supply the motherboard to you. Okay, I think yeah, this is it from the this side. Uh, we can conclude. I any uh, yeah. Are there any other questions, questions from the start, yeah. audience? Okay, uh, so it looks like there, there are uh, no more questions from the audience. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining this uh, wonderful session this evening, uh, despite of your busy schedule. Uh, I know it's been it's always good to have a uh, learning uh, as a part of your uh, work. And then each of these webinar sessions, what we introduce is basically to help people uh, learn new technologies and then bring it out. Thank you everyone. Bye.